The Bible says righteous people embrace correction. We, we want to be corrected. And so the Holy Spirit needs to correct some things or teach you some things. Essentially, he has some knowledge that you need to have. So you cry out to the Lord, you listen, and he's going to speak to you either through the word or through the Holy Spirit. He's going to speak direction to you. Dorinda and I were in dysfunctional debt for nine years. It was not fun at all. It was just survival. And when I ran out of every option, no one had any more money to lend me. Every debt was canceled, had no options. I fell across my bed and I cried out to God and he answered me and said, the reason you're in this mess is because you do not know how my kingdom operates. You've never taken the time to learn how my kingdom operates. Gary, you're doing things the world's way and wanting me to bless it, but I have another system. You've never taken the time to learn my system. So you cry out, God will speak to you. He'll begin to mentor and correct and move you back on center. He'll also have to teach you how his kingdom operates. His kingdom is a kingdom of integrity, and many of the things you've learned in the earth realm in survival lack integrity, like asking for someone to pay you cash under the table to avoid paying taxes. Some of the practices you are now doing may not be righteous, or they may not have integrity. During this phase, when God began to teach us his kingdom, when he said that to us, we began to explore and God began to teach us his kingdom. We began to see things happen. He led us to begin a business. It began to prosper somewhat. We began to see change. And uh, two of the main problems we had in those days were our cars. They should have been buried a long time ago. They were a mess. You know, they would smoke and sputter and we just were glad they started. And we had a car accident maybe a year before this time period I'm talking about. So we knew a settlement was coming. And we looked for a car to replace, the, uh, replace one of these cars. And Saturn, remember GM Saturn just came out and they were to compete with the Japanese imports. Do you remember that? I may be 1990s in those days. And so we went and looked at these Saturns and because I was in sales driving every day, I said, I, I, I think we need a Saturn. So we, we drove them, we picked the color and the settlement came through $22,000. Now I remember at that time, to have $22,000 in our checking account was like just, we are billionaires. You know what I'm saying? That's a lot of money when you're just coming out of nothingness, right? We are so excited to go get this car. Now, previous to that check being issued by the insurance company, two months before, I was with my dad. And the nine years that we were living without money, my dad was my bank or my lender, however you want to call it. When I needed money, I went to dad, Okay. And uh, I didn't know this, but dad was actually keeping track of every dime he gave me. <laughs> I didn't know that. And two months before I was talking to dad, I said, dad, you know, I so appreciate all you've done for us. And I'm going to, I mean, you know, we're going to make it up to you. And he goes, well, that's 20. He named the numbers and that's 20,000. He says, I've been keeping track. I've got it all written down. It's $20,000. He said, but don't worry about it. He said, you don't have to pay me back. He said, I'll just have it noted in my will that when my estate is dispersed, I'll have them take $20,000 out of your share. I thought that was pretty good. I mean, really, you know, I mean, really, it took the weight off, you know, I'm saying, you know, that was, I thought that was very generous. I thanked my dad for that. Thought that was a done deal. That, that's awesome, dad. Thank you so much. So we were, we got the check and we were about to go buy that Saturn. I mean, to go, go buy it. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me. He said, uh, Go pay your dad. You owe your dad 20000 I said, yeah, but you heard me. He, he says, I don't have to pay him back. <laughs> He'll take it out of the estate. And this is what God said to me. He said, if you do that, he'll never see your integrity and he'll never see my faithfulness. You pay him back. Otherwise, every time your car drives down the street, he'll think, there goes my $20,000. You are kidding, God, right? You're kidding. Now, put yourself in our shoes now. We had been struggling for nine years. God had spoken to us about the kingdom. Things are moving, but we need a car. My dad does not need the money. He has a lot of money. 20000 to him, not that much money. He doesn't need it. We need it. You're kidding me. Pay my dad back? I mean, pay my, he doesn't need the $20,000. No, but Gary, you need to pay him back. 
Not for him, but for me. That was a struggle. You ever wrestle with the Holy Spirit? Oh, that was a struggle. Finally, we, you know, we said, yes, we've already played it our way for long enough, and God had been dealing with us. We've got to learn his ways. Called Dad up. And this is how he answered it. He usually answered this way. How much money do you need this time? Is that how he answered it? No, Dad, we're not coming to borrow money. We're coming to pay you back. Now, he knew that I knew the amount because he told me two months before the amount, 20000 And he was shocked. I could hear silence on the phone. Well, I'm coming over, Dad. Well, okay. So we got there, and the, the event is just, you know, vivid in my memory. I walked in. Dad's on the couch. I walk in and say, Dad, I want to pay you back. And he said, well, you know, that's $20,000. I know, Dad. I want to, I'm going to pay you back. Pulled my checkbook out. Went to start writing the check. And, Dad, I could see tears in his eyes. And he said, no, wait, no, wait a minute, he said. I'll tell you what. You write a check for $10,000, i will call the rest a gift. Now, think about what I was thinking. <laughs> 10000 from 22000 leaves 12000 How much was my car going to be? 11500 Are you with me? Okay, Dad, that's awesome. Here's 10000 <laughs> And we drove straight to the Saturn dealership and bought our new car, but we were willing to give that up. So you got to pass the integrity test. See, God is your sword. He's got to train you in this system where you've been training to trust credit cards or other... other you, he's got to train you that He is your source. Hi, I'm Gary Cassie, and you will never fulfill your destiny until you fix your money thing. Visit GaryCassie.com and don't forget to hit the subscribe button below for more amazing weekly videos on fixing your money thing. And thanks for watching.